Number 18, the initial concentrations or pressures of reactants and products are given for each of the following systems. Calculate the reaction quotient and determine the direction in which each system will proceed to reach equilibrium. All right, and then we have this letter uh, right here. We have a balanced equation because I see that they gave me coefficients already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this just so that we can work with it. So I have two. Let's maybe make that a little bit better, two SO3 gases comes to equilibrium, I have the double arrow, with two SO2 gases and then plus O2 gas. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to basically write out the pressures that they told me. Now I know that they're pressures because ATM is a unit of pressure and also the KP that they gave me, P stands for pressure as well. So, let's see. SO2, they told me I had one ATM. So, that's a product. I'm just going to say I have one ATM for here. O2, they told me I had 1.1300, 1 or 1.1, 0 1.130 ATM. And then SO3, I had none. Okay. So, basically, these are the initial concentrations. One part of the question where they said determine the direction basically means how is this reaction going to proceed? Which one of these arrows are we going to be doing? Are we going to go from reactant to product or are we going to go from product to reactant? Now remember, if you're going one way, you have to have something in order to produce something on the other side. But look here, guys, the SO3, I don't have any. I have zero. So can I basically make something from nothing? Not in chemistry. There's no such thing as negative pressures. So I can't like go and get some credit, right? And get like negative ATMs. That doesn't work here. So you can't go this way because you have nothing to give. The only option would be to go the reverse direction. I have SO2 and I have O2 to make the SO3. So that's like a little trick, guys. If you see that you have zero on one side of the equation, you have to go towards that side. So we already, you know, answered the second part of the question. Determine the direction. You're going to shift or proceed or whatever word you want to use uh, to the left. You're going to go the reverse reaction. Okay. Now the only thing left to do is to calculate the reaction quotient. That's Q. Specifically, we're going to be doing QP because P's got to match with each other. And I gave the QP formula down here. So let's see. Now, in order to use the QP formula, remember, aqueous and gases are only allowed. So just check those states. But seems like we're pretty good here. Gas, gas, and gas. So let's start with the equation. Products divided by reactant. I got two products. So let's see. The product... Oh, actually, the pressure, sorry about that, of SO2. Hold on. The pressure of SO2. And now I remember, I just got to raise those to the coefficients. So there's a 2 here. So I have to raise this to the second. Now, I go to the next product. This is multiplication. Even though the balance equation says addition, you multiply with the Q's, okay? So I'm going to say pressure of O2, close the, the parenthesis, and since I don't have a number, remember, this just means that I have one of them, so I don't have to put a 1 here. Anything raised to the first is itself. And now let's see. I got a pressure of the SO3. I'm now going to the reactants. I do see that I have a 2 coefficient, so... I have to raise that to the second. Now let's plug in the numbers. So QP equals products over reactants. Let's see. The SO2 was 1.00 ATM. And that was raised to the second times 1 point, actually, 1.130. Close that up. 
And then this would be divided by, ooh, zero. And that's technically squared, right? Now let's just get a number for the top and the bottom. QP equals the first number, the numerator, would just be 1.130, and then the bottom would be 0. Uh-oh. Remember, anything divided by 0 is undefined. There is no number for it. So you would not have a number answer for this. This is undefined mainly because you have no starting material. So generally speaking, when you have no starting material, the Q value is always, always, always going to be undefined. All right? And then we gave the direction before. You're going to shift left because you have nothing to start with. So you got to get it back. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let me know in the comments. Love, love to talk to you guys. Good luck on all your future tests and quizzes. And if you want to check out the channel, we also got physics and math videos. So maybe we could help you out there too, all right? I will speak to you later. Bye-bye.